this video might be a challenge and you'll see why, no doubt. Hi, my name's Mel and this is my floss tube channel, Patchy Pony Stitcher. It's a video all about cross stitch. So welcome new and old subscribers. Uh, we've got a fair bit to show you. I've got big life updates to show and talk about. I have a few FFOs, some FOs, some whips. I've got lots today, lots. It's the first time in oh, maybe three weeks that I've had the house to myself. It's been Easter school holidays. I've had my husband on annual leave with me. We've been away. So today is the first day that I can take a breath, reevaluate <laughs> and see what we've got. Actually, taking a breath is probably not the great, the, the best description because, uh, yeah, the house is a little bit of a whirlwind at the moment. I, in my last video, I talked to you, I was showing you my farms of Hawkeye Hollow where I'd added some cats in to uh, represent our current cat and a past cat. And sadly, we lost our current cat a couple of weeks ago, Levi. We only had him for four years and he came to us as a older kitten, uh, maybe a teenager you could say, he just rocked up one day and decided this is where he was going to live and there was no no turning back from there um, but unfortunately we lost him and the void was very, very obvious to everyone in the family. He was such a good cat and when he was gone there was something missing. So we decided after we returned from our holiday that we needed to fill that void. So this is what may cause the challenge and the interruptions, but we'll, I'm going to introduce you to Lily. So this is baby Lily. She's all of nine weeks. She's a, we picked her up from the local um, cat shelter as a, as a nine week old kitten and she's very well socialized, toilet trained, She's fitted in just perfectly. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see all the Lily spam and you're more than welcome to, to come over and, and I will obviously be doing regular updates. But she is a bundle of energy. She loves climbing up here and she loves grabbing onto my stitching and sitting in my trolley. But now all she wants to do is get down. So I'm sure Lily will make another appearance during the video because... Uh, She's got the zoomies on right now, haven't you, Lil Lil? So, off you go. So, we went on a little holiday. We were meant to go up to Queensland, which is in the north of Australia. Unfortunately, that didn't happen because the weather was not kind to us and not our friend. And we were going to be on a boat and it just was a recipe for disaster. So we decided to go in a different different direction uh, and headed to South Australia, which is a big wine area. So we spent a couple of days in the Barossa Valley. And again, if you follow me on Instagram, you would see some of the photos that I posted there. We had a wonderful time, just myself and my husband. It's been a while since uh, we've had the opportunity to holiday as adults, as a couple, without without the children, now that they're 19 and 17, we've um, been given that opportunity to now rediscover ourselves, which is fabulous. I mean, really enjoying doing things with my husband, which is just, it's great. So we had a holiday over there. We did lots of wine tasting, lots of yummy food. We went up in a hot air balloon, which was so much fun. If you ever get the opportunity to do a hot air balloon ride, do it because Oh, it's just so peaceful. You would think it would be windy and scary, but everything is slow and quiet. It's just just amazing. So if you get the opportunity to do a hot air balloon ride, do it. Even if you're scared of heights, because it's ever so slowly. You don't, it's not a fast takeoff. It's not a fast landing. It's everything is slow and gradual. So one of my, yeah, one of the best experiences I've ever done with a holiday tour so right well let's get into stitching because as I said this is a cross stitch video and I have heaps to show you so now that we've got Lily introduced it's time for some FFOs so I have got 
one, two, three, four FFOs to show you because I, ha I was starting to bank them up. I really didn't think I'd be that stitcher that would start to have a pile of them because I'd actually enjoy the FFOing process. But these were smalls and what I had in my mind was a bit trickier than what I've attempted. So we've got one disaster, or no, no, let's say we've got one learning curve. Let's call it a learning curve, not a disaster. And we've got two others that I'm really pleased with and a small that I used, um, I did a small for uh, the Smalls Exchange at a local retreat that we had here at the beginning, no, mid-March, there was about 15 ladies and it was just so delightful. It was an overnight one where we stayed on site and all our meals were prepared by the by the homestead that we were staying at. It was just delightful and very much needed to, <laughs> here she comes. Um, it was very much needed just to, to hang out with some stitchy ladies and stitch the weekend away. But first of all, so before I get into this, actually no, I'll pop in here what um, my Smalls exchange gift was. So I'll pop that here. So here's the small I am have for the gift exchange for a little retreat that we've got coming up here in Tassie over the weekend. It is by Waxy Moon Design. It's called Checkerboard Bunny, but it's not the entire design. I only used a little bit because I've made a little pin cushion. So I found this uh, little urn thing at the local op shop and I couldn't resist. I knew it would make a nice finish and I've just popped a little circular finish in the top with a bit of, um, ruched, not ruched lace, just gathered lace. And yeah, I was gonna add a bit more to it, but I think it would, would have been too busy if it had beads or something hanging down. So that's my small finish for the month of March for Withgo. I was really happy with how that turned out and it was really hard to give away. So when you know that you want to keep something, you know that it's that you've essentially done a good job. So that was a tough to give that away because I really enjoyed stitching it and I really enjoyed finishing that off. But what I got in return is beautiful. So rather than waiting to the till we get to the haul, I'm going to show you what um, I received in the gift exchange. So this is the stitching. Isn't that just gorgeous and it's a little project bag it is so sweet and so well done I just love this lace across the zip oh, I just I felt very lucky to receive this as um, the smalls exchange and it's all quilted it's got beautiful bee fabric right up my alley just love it with my husband involved with bees which I guess he's now an apiarist is that the word yes We've got an apiary. We've got like uh, maybe 30 hives now and they're continuing to expand and get more and more all the time. But anyway, back to stitching. So very, very lucky girl to receive. And I was the last one to, because we used a random, random number generator to choose who would go up and you would select a parcel and it was unmarked. So you didn't know who it was from and so forth. So I was the last number picked and this is what um what was left in the last parcel and <laughs> I think I got one of the best ones so very very happy with that okay on to my finishes so first of all I'm going to show you the learning curve so the learning curve was the spring bunny love um finish that I had and I wanted to do I'll show put a photo here of the un finished just the stitching we'll put that there okay so there's the stitching and I wanted to finish this into an easter egg shape which was probably a little bit ambitious for someone who doesn't use a machine a lot and I wanted to do pom-pom trim and I've done pom-pom trim before where I've sewn it on after the event but with this one I actually wanted to sew it in so I cut the shape out. I'm just gonna have to show you. <laughs> it's not my best work, but anyway, we're all learning, aren't we? So here, <laughs> it's not really an egg shape, but you get the gist of it. When I put it in my smalls bowl, it sort of goes on the side. So anyway, so here's the stitching. 
and I just used some denim fabric. So when we get holes in clothes or they're outgrown, I actually cut out the fabric. So this is actually a leg, a part of a pair of denim jeans. So I've just popped a bit of denim on that and I, and I wanted to put the pom-pom trim in. So I cut it out beautifully. The shapes were lovely um, from my template. And I was so pleased with how the stitching of the pom-pom trim, because it's got a little um, bit of tape on it. And yeah, I was worried I was going to sew over the pom-poms, but no. So as I was turning it out, I was getting so excited that um, all the pom-poms were on the right side of where they should be. And then I stuffed it, I, like filled it. <laughs> And I used, like I did a Vonna, like keep putting more in, so like with the drum. So once you think you've got enough in there, just put a bit more. But obviously, yeah, somehow during the sewing process, I really didn't get, I didn't nail the egg shape. But like I said, it goes into a dough bowl and I've got other little Easter eggs. So it sort of lays on its side and it's a little bit hard to see that it's a wobbly <laughs> wobbly egg but like I said it's a learning curve I wasn't going to undo it because <sighs> what do you do do you really start from the start or do you just go you make do and I put a little um what do they call them a little light bulb pin and some buttons on there and I'm going to put on my little 2021 which I found I dropped it and while I was getting ready for the video I found my little charm that I want to put on, can you see that? Little 21. So that will also go on there. So finish number one for the video. And that was the learning curve. <laughs> the second one I did um, was Poppy. So this is the unfinished, sorry, the finish, just the stitching on its own, which I didn't know what I wanted to do with this. I was thinking of a pillow and I'm thinking, well, when would I display it? I'd probably bring it out at Anzac Day and Remembrance Day. But I thought, well, it's actually not just suitable for that. So what I decided to do, I was going to make a candle wrap. But then I didn't want it to get wax on it. So what I did is I made a vase wrap. So I'll show you how it goes on. So now this vase, I needed something with a bit of length in it. And what this is, is a Bacardi bottle and I've cut the top off it with a glass cutter because we make candles as well. Like we pour our own soy wax candles. So originally I did this for a soy wax candle, but it was too big. So this was a perfect shape and it's got a bit of a green tinge to it, which goes just beautifully with the fabric. So essentially all I did was make a pillow but not turn it in but not stuff it essentially so I put interfacing on um, sewed it on it's a little bit wobbly in um, the lacing but I sewed the lace on and then I just sewed the four buttons on and all I've done with the ribbon is just wind it round and then I just get the vase or the grog bottle and just wrap the ribbon around and there you go and that will look beautiful with poppies in it or any other sort of flowers and it's a versatile piece that I can actually use and that's just sitting on my sideboard at the moment displaying the actual stitching so I was really pleased with that and how that turned out and it's it's something that I'd um, think about doing doing at another time for different finishes. So that was my poppies. Now, the finish that I am wrapped with. This is Jingle Bells. Now I have given the chart away already for this one, so I can't remember um, who the designer is. And when I finished this, I don't think I ever showed you because it was a pillow and I was waiting on the pom-pom trim to put on. And then I just changed my mind because I thought, well, what am I going to do with this round pillow? So I actually undid the pillow and made it into an ornament. So I've got two pieces of, um, what do you call why do we forget words when soon as the video is on? I just don't understand it. 
I've got two pieces of foam core and just plain fabric on the back. Well, not plain fabric, isn't that stunning fabric? And then I've got wadding on the front of this one. And then I've glued them together and I've hand, and then, yes, I hand stitched them together with a bit of ribbon in to hold that in. Because this was originally, I was thinking it was a Christmas wreath, but it's really got quite pinks rather than reds. And then with the trim, it was either bright pink or bright red, and it really didn't match. So I tea dyed the trim for ages, and it really didn't absorb much of the tea, but it did dull down the pinkness of it. So, and then I just hand stitched um, the pom pom trim around. I took off. Do I take off the tape? No, actually, I wedged the tape in between the two layers. And I am so happy with how that has come along. And I just have that sitting on a little um, door handle on our glass cabinet. So it's just, it can be out at any time. It's not necessarily, I think, Christmassy because it's got hearts. And yeah, just it was a really sweet piece. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Because originally it was just a circle pillow and I had a button in there. And I was going to do the pom pom. And I thought, well, what am I going to do with it? It's actually quite big. So that's why I changed my mind and turned it into an ornament. Super happy with how that came along and hopefully we will get a floss tube screenshot. Probably not, but we all try and hope because floss tube loves to pick up the, the crazy face ones. Okay, everything has gone quiet. The zoomies have stopped, which is just delightful. <laughs> she loves clawing on things and, and just running around. Okay, so finishes. Two more finishes that I have completed, thanks to Whip Go. So you saw that this one was nearly complete last video, and this is... Oh, sorry. Welcome Spring by Brenda Gervais. So I was getting very close to a finish at last video for this one and I've got it finished and I love it. So this is on a, must be a 32 count and it's like a raw linen. It's quite stiff, but I love how this turned out and those bees, oh my gosh, they are so cute. So I was so happy with how that came and I think I'm going to do a flat fold with it, very similar to the ornament, so two pieces of, um, I can't, I've lost the word again, foam core, and then sandwich them together so that, and then have a little um, stand on it. But I love how this guy turned out. That is such a cute chart. So I was so happy with that one. So stay tuned because uh, I've got a finished chart that I need to share. And the other one that I finished is called Pale Pumpkins by Shakespeare Peddler. So it's only a small, this was came up on my whip go and it, Teresa had it on a candle, like a little candle stick and made it into a pin cushion. So I did mine on 14 count Ada and this is, and then I changed the colors because I was finding when I pulled the colors, see how it's, it is called Pale Pumpkins, I guess for a reason. But they're nearly white and once i'd started i didn't want to unpick it and this was a mania let me flip that around this was a mania start uh, so i just got that one out of my whip pile for a finisher small so i will try my best to find something similar to what teresa had finished hers on with the the candlestick and maybe make a taller piece for my autumn decor so i was quite happy with how that came out and that was just using threads from stash, pulling, just choosing pumpkin colours as I went. There was no rhyme or, or reason. So they are my fully finished objects and two finished objects. So now I'm going to show you three whips today that I've been working on. I've got about, for people that are new and or haven't seen my whip parade, I've got about 27 on the go at the moment. And I... I don't touch all of them every month. It's just too much. I usually have someone, some that I focus on due to challenges, either with the Daily 30 group or Semi Sane and Whip Go. So the first one I'm going to show you, well, let's do farms. 
first of all. So Farms of Ork Corcoran Hollow. Um, most people have seen the series. So I am working currently on this guy here. So I'm not gonna pull out the whole entire piece off my Q-snap. So this is where we were last time. And as I said, we, I just put the cat in, so that was, that's Levi. And now I think I'm gonna to have to add in a third cat um, for Lily. And so we finished off the structure. Now I made a boo-boo on this one. I can't remember who was showing their farms of Hawkeron Hollow and they were working on the same block. And it wasn't until they were showing theirs that I realized, see how the roof here has two colors? And I think it's meant to sort of make it look like it's a th like the 3D. And I'm like, oh no, I hadn't realized. And when I was stitching, I just went all the way across. And I thought, again, I'm not pulling that out. So we, so I, rather than having different colors on this side, I've just pulled the, the beam all the way across and made it all one color. And we'll just fill that up with, um, the, the people in it so I've done it I'm happy with how that's coming along again more progress slowly slowly and using it for prompts wherever I can so that is far, uh, farms of Hawkron Hollow on 16 count tea dyed Ada using the DMC called for flosses so we'll pop him down there the next one I'm going to show you is Fraser dolls now I showed you this in my wet parade. So this is, oops, stuff going everywhere. So this is where I was up to before and I'm gonna pop in a cover photo. Actually, no, we're gonna pop in the cover photo first. And this is where I was up to before. Now I'm gonna show you all the pieces. Hmm. One momento, I have put the chart so these are 3D and that's essentially what you stitch before you put it together so I'm working on the Claire Fraser doll currently because I thought if I did Jamie first I may never get to Claire <laughs> so we so I I have done some of Claire and this is where we are I am up to I don't know why I keep saying we there's no we in this um, in this video so that's Claire's head and what will happen is when I pull all that together then I will crochet long bits into her hair to give her the length of her hair and this I'm really pleased with how this turned out because this has got tartan in it and when I was stitching it I was like I'm not going to be able to see the light and the darker brown because they were so so close but once, you, once it's stitched, you can actually see the difference. And what you do essentially is do one leg in a stripe all the way across and then you go back with a different coloured thread to give that tartan effect. And essentially it, you cross over different colours and it either makes it solid or gives it the tartan. So that's the front of the doll. I have to do the back of the doll, which is pretty much identical except for the teal blue vest goes all the way across rather than having the bodice. So that is my Claire Fraser doll. They, they're a little bit boring to work on, but I know the finished product is gonna be good. So that's sort of um, a traveling project or something where you know you're gonna be waiting and there's not a lot of, um, you don't have to take a lot of stuff out because I use a really small hoop. So I got a really small hoop with this guy and um, yeah you can sort of and being 14 count Ada so I use the 14 count Ada on this one because that's what the chart called for and I thought I need to keep everything as per the instructions because the instructions are quite lengthy now this if you're interested this um, particular chart is on Facebook under Robin Hobbs um, Yes, Robin Hobbs on Facebook. And there's all sorts of different characters from Star Trek, lots of um, TV show characters. So if you're interested and want to have a browse, check out Robin Hobbs. So R-O-B-I-N, 
Hobbs on Facebook and uh, you can purchase those charts that way. Now the next one I want to show you is the one that is so close to a finish but I just didn't get over the finish line with it. So I'm going to pop it in where I was last time you saw it last month. And so we are doing, I, I am doing Alice from Ori TM. So this is the project I took with me to South Australia. So I got a fair bit of plane and airport stitching done. It's not ironed. So this is the square finished completely. No, actually, I can see two mushrooms that I have to put in because I ran out of floss and stopped on there. But how cool is that? And this is where I'm up to with Alice. So Alice will be bending over. I haven't fit quite finished her Quaker dress. And she will be peering down the black hole. And so, so close to a finish on that one, which will be my... Um, partner piece to Oz but also by Ori TM. So the chart called for just a light blue on Alice's dress. I wanted her to be a focal point being that it's Alice so I am using Jay's cross stitch. Oh, this was a Mittagong, a Mittagong retreat piece so it doesn't have a name and it's pan painted thread so it's not actually dyed it's actually painted and it is a cotton and you can, Jay's X Stitch does have these available on her Etsy shop. So I'll just show you the tag in case you're interested. And yeah, so it's actually heavily variegated and I'm doing my best to try and keep the colours running together. But I am happy with how that's coming along because there's no other colour in the chart like it. So she will pop once she's all done and you can see that she does have a white bodice on her dress so with the white rabbit it was white outlined and he was meant to just be an outline but I filled him in with DMC a toile just so you could see him on my fabric so I'm but he is gray opposed to white so I'm unsure whether I will do the same for her bodice because I do want it to be or I may back put the white in and I may back stitch it with a dark blue out of that thread so next video Hopefully it might be an FFO or at least an F, a finished finished piece. So this is on Colour Cassades, uh, Barbie Girl. Is it Barbie Girl or Barbie Way? I think it's Barbie Girl colourway and it's an opalescent 32 count even weave. So very similar um, fabric to my Oz. So that is Alice by Ori TM. So the... Tiny Decisions app spun Easter Parade for my next future project to be kitted. And I've chosen Vintage Count Country Mocha 32 Count um, in the Belfast Linen for the piece. Now this has all weeks and gas, uh, sorry, gentle arts. So rather than buying small amounts, um, sorry, that many skeins, because I'll show you the so there is the floss use, and that is a lot of speciality threads. So I picked out the three main ones for the chart, so the biggest one. So first of all, we've got hook corn husk, which is a yellowy green, which is what is meant to be the vines and the grass. Then we've got weeks putty, which is the bunny. And then we've got... Um, Gentle Arts Brandy. Now, this is supposed to be the chicken, but to me, this is orange. And the chicken does not look orange. So I think I'm going to sub that out and find something a bit yellower, more to this like, this sort of. And I may even use the same one that I did with the chicken in Welcome Spring because I really liked how that came out. And then for the rest of the colours, I just went into a conversion PDF for weeks and for Gentle Arts and just pulled the DMCs. Now, I've got a problem because to me, that jacket is blue. 522 is Mountain Mist for Gentle Arts and I'm not going to be using that one. So 
I will also think I'll find a variegated blue. But the rest, like, but there's only some, in some of them, there's only one or two stitches. Like, the eye is one colour, and that's got a gentle art. So I'm not going to do that. I'll just use my own threads there. So that is my future start for this month. So that chart will go into my kitted bag of projects. I'm undecided whether or not to do Mania. I really liked the March Madness of choo of getting you guys to choose the project. So I might do something similar with that, like do two, get the, the what is it, tiny decision wheel to choose two projects and then I'll put them on Insta and you can tell me which one I'm going to start where I need to add in the chart to into my whip rotation because I do like to have 31 on the go and um, we've got a few holes to fill there. So giveaways. I have a few unclaimed giveaways. The first one I have was a redraw for Spot of Autumn. So Christy Martin, this is the second call out for you to claim this one. So if we haven't got um, a claim by the next video, I'll redraw on that, which will be the third redraw. And then the second one I, that hasn't been claimed yet is Philogram in my garden. And that's for Pauline Robry. So Pauline, this is the second call out for you for this one. So you'll need to send me um, an email and my email address is in the description below. Now for the giveaway for last video was Autumn Squirrel by the Blue Flower. So I will put in here the random comment word picker. So good luck. Autumn Squirrel giveaway. We have the keyword being flower. We've got 14 unique comments and we are going to pick a winner. It's Craft and Chris. Congratulations, Chris. I'll just scroll down and see what your comment says. Oh, it's a big one. Always fun catching up with you, Mel. It's hard to believe how far Hawkron Hello has come. I remember being impressed at your clever dyeing techniques. Thank you, Chris. My favourite flower is a peony. Oh, I like peonies too. So congratulations. Pop me an email and we'll get that out for you. Congratulations, Craft and Chris. Send me an email and we'll get that one out to you. Craft and Chris has been a long comment, long time commenter on my channel. I think you might have been here, well, from the very beginning. So this month's giveaway is going to be the Welcome Spring by Brenda Gervais. So that's this one that I've just finished. I haven't yet... Um, fully finished it. Now this is a well-loved um, chart. I received it as a share from Cynthia Brew, so it has been used twice, so it does have a bit of love marks on it. Um, so just be aware that it's not a brand new, a brand new chart. So if you would like to, for me to share with you Welcome Spring, please comment below with your favorite type of baby animal that's usually at springtime. So it's not spring here in Australia, we're just, we're heading into autumn, well, we're in autumn, it's not heading into it, we're well and truly. Fires have been lit and uh, horses have been rugged. Um, but yes, in your comment, the key word will be baby, but I want you to tell me what your favorite baby animal is, whether it's a puppy, a kitten, lambs, chickens, whatever your favorite baby animal is. So, and then I will um, draw that for next month. Now I did a thing. I don't really have plans because I let um, the, my challenge groups determine what I'll be stitching. So I don't have plans as such, but I do have plans to try 40 count eee! at my retreat, um, fa fancy fabrics. So I'll show you. So this is 40 count Newcastle linen. Whoops. And this is a fat quarter by fancy fabrics, which you can find on Facebook. And there, and Melissa is an Australian dyer so here in Tassie. And this is called donkey. 
and I love it. But it's 40 count, so I need to find, I think, I, I'm not a sampler girl yet. I'm more of a Quaker girl, so I might find a nice Quaker with a really dark variegated brown that I can stitch on that. But I love it, but I can hardly see the holes. It's 40 count, oh my gosh. So I did a thing and started. But I've still got that Christine one, which I probably should start having a crack at that before I do the 40 count because that was 32 over one. Uh, so this is 40 over one, which is even smaller. So until next month, I hope you guys have some good stitching time, enjoying your spring or for us Australians enjoying our autumn. I do like the spring and autumn seasons more so than the winter summers. I like it when it's a little bit varied, a bit of, bit of a rainy day, sunny day and so forth. So I am loving autumn at the moment, just with the fires going, it's getting cozy, the days are getting shorter and it's getting into soup season and slow cooking food in the oven and, and all that cozy goodness. And I've got a good excuse to stay inside and snuggle with this little girl. So when you see her in four weeks time, because it was, I'll come back to you at the beginning of May. I do have two um, domestic trips coming up. One in, in May back to South Australia and then one to Melbourne in July. So I've got a little bit of thing, good things to start to look forward to. So 2021 is looking awesome. So until I see you next month, guys, have a good one and happy stitching.